Hello, and welcome to the Artistic Motorcycle Company. My name is Craig Austin. Today, I'd like to talk to you about a project I've been working on for a couple of years now, and that is the development of a vintage-inspired rain gear, uh, an overcoat. I've worn the inexpensive two-piece rain suits before. They're usually PVC-coated synthetic fabric of some sort. Minimalist features, too strong and elastic in some places, too bulky and flappy in others, tends to tear if it gets snagged on something, and is very easily melted on your exhaust pipes. Oh, um, not great. But it does keep you dry if you're taking good care of it. I've also tried the mid-range gear, the two-piece sets, jacket and pants. They roll up into their own storage pouch, bright colors, reflective patches, uh, venting, which is very nice if the inexpensive stuff hasn't got. Good fit, heat-resistant panels on the legs to keep them off your exhaust pipes. Uh, very effective to keep you dry. And much more comfortable on a long touring ride in warm weather where the inexpensive stuff would leave you feeling clammy and just miserable. Now, I admit I've not tried the higher end things like Aerostitch and the like, in that I've never had a cause to pursue them, so I have no opinion or criticism of that equipment at all. But uh, one of the reasons I've never pursued the higher end equipment is that it has something in common with the low range and mid range product that I have tried. And that is, it doesn't seem appropriate for a vintage-inspired motorcycle. It's too flashy, it's too modern. It, there's a discrepancy, a juxtaposition of eras in time and styling. It just didn't sit well with me. So I thought, I need to find something that's more appropriate to the motorcycles that I'm passionate about. All right, so I went shopping. And I found this Outback brand, Australian Drover. It's a horseman's coat, mid-calf length, at a general store and hardware store in uh, rural Georgia. Uh, traditional styling, oiled cotton. It has a cape, has a snap closure with a storm flap. Has a collar that you can turn up and close. There we are. You can gather the sleeves with adjustments here. And the skirt, the lower part of the jacket, has leg straps for binding it to your legs as you're astride a horse. And it also has a panel in the back that allows the jacket to spread out over your your legs so that it keeps the back of your saddle dry. It's oiled cotton, as I said, and uh, as a working coat or a casual walking around rain coat, it's quite effective. So the question was, would it be good on the motorcycle? Okay, so here I am on my Royal Enfield. I have the Drover on, and looking at it, it looks pretty good. Oh, but I took it out for a spin in the rain one day and I discovered some shortfalls. For one, because it's only mid-cap length, when you sit down, the hem pulls up, and it gets pretty close to revealing your knees into the rain. Also, the snaps that come all the way down the face of the skirt tend to run into the bike, which uh, rattles. Can't really make it do that, but nevertheless, they do rattle against the bike. There we go, hear that? Uh, could scratch the paint. Also, because it has a simple storm flap, it's not difficult for the rain to find its way through. And it's designed with a cape to keep your shoulders dry by adding another layer of protection. Well, that tends to flap in the breeze, so you need to remove it. To resolve that problem. So I took it for a spin. And as I said, with the lower the pen having climbed up a bit, I also had a problem with the wind holding the jacket back, even with the leg straps tied on. So that exposed my knees and my upper can, uh, upper shin to the rain. But it looked pretty good. I'm thinking, you well, know, this is a pretty
pretty decent idea. I think I'll work with this. Okay, so the Australian duster looked good. Had some nice features like inside and outside pockets, the storm flap, the collar, the water repellency. On the test ride though, it flew open. And what else did we discover? Oh yes, it had a cape. Remember that? The cape that came over your shoulders? My shoulders? That's intended to give another layer of protection. And I kind of wondered why. Great style. Turns out that the oiled cotton is not entirely impervious. So rain falling on your shoulder all day long will eventually drive the moisture through the coat. Hence the cape. At 35 and 40 miles an hour, the wind and rain is driving into your chest and your upper arm. And again, after a while, it begins to push its way right through the fabric. And the coat was a dark color. And driving around in dreary, rainy, overcast conditions, it tends to blend into the background. Not good when you need conspicuity, as they say, to be spotted against a busy background by other motorists. Well, I went looking for a different kind of coat or a variation on the Drover. Searched the internet and really didn't find anything except, except this. A company called Folkwear reproduces patterns for clothing that was popular decades or two ago. And they offered one called a Pattern 137, Australian Drover's Coat. A drover, apparently, is someone that handles horses and cattle. It's a traditional horseman's duster, easy to sew coat, and there's a pattern for a pullover sweater to knit. Uh, I'm not going to knit, but that's what it looks like. All right, great start. Duster and drover. The drover would have the cape, the drover would have the storm flap, and the long length and the leg straps for a horseman. Oh, and it also has the flap in the back to settle over your horse saddle. The duster now is a much simpler coat. It has a single row of buttons down the front, short, close-fitting collar, long sleeves, and it can be as much as ankle length. Now, these were uh, came into the fore in the early ages of automobiles, where uh, the affluent were dressed accordingly and take their motor machines out on the unimproved roads and before long would be completely covered in dust, ruining their clothes or at least their appearance at their destination. So they devised a duster, literally a coat to keep the dust off their clothes. Very simple, thin, lightweight, completely covered them and would take the dust off with it when they arrived at their destination. Nice idea. Okay. So I made the pattern and let's see what happened. And here it is. This is made of bottom weight cotton and a light off white, uh, and it's been waxed. I had no other means of waterproofing the fabric, so I looked up waxed cotton. It's actually accomplished by mixing 25% beeswax with 75% paraffin wax, melting and blending it together, casting it into a block, and then rubbing it on the fabric and heating it with a hair dryer, for instance. Uh, arduous process, took forever, hours and hours of TV reruns while I rubbed the wax into the fabric and heated it with the hair dryer. And it was moderately water repellent. Uh, much like the drover we saw before, it has a storm flap, single row of buttons inside, and snaps actually. It does have a collar that can be flipped up and closed. Uh, but it's made, the proportions of the pattern were made to basically for walking around. And so the sleeve is a decent length for that, but when you reach forward to a motorcycle, it pulls up. Nice length though, I lengthened the pattern to get it down to my ankles. Well, let's see how this looks on the motorcycle. Okay, here I am. As I said, the sleeves pull up when you reach for the bars. The snaps, I haven't really thought about it when I beat this, they again hit on the tank. I also found out that the pockets, although useful, are oddly positioned 
Here they're kind of a storm flap affair, so water has to go up and through the flap to get into it. But uh, having arranged them so they're more or less upright, so the over flap drains, they're in opposition when I stand, they're, they're tipped, reach, it's easier to reach in for the opposite hand than the one on the same side. I also discovered that the marine canvas snaps aren't really good on clothing. They tend to unsnap rather easily. So that wasn't so good. And, and the idea of the cape providing an additional layer of fabric on the shoulder. I also designed this one with a doublet or a chest piece that's buttoned onto it to double the layers of fabric in the front. Uh, didn't work very well, and obviously I don't know what I've done with it now. Uh, but the length was good, except even with the leg straps, this part kept flapping around, and it would, again, pull back at the sides, leaving my knees and upper, can and upper shins exposed to the rain. Um, and as I said, the water repellency wasn't quite what I was hoping for. But again, another step closer to the goal. Worth having gone to the effort. So let's talk about the next iteration. So right off the bat, you notice this one's rather bulky. Reason being, it's double-breasted. So I close it. And you'll see this is one of the problems I have with the design. There we go. Now that it's double breasted, ah, I've actually got that on the wrong one. There we go. Again, an illustration of a short sighted design. There we go. Being double breasted, rather than having a seam down the center, the opening is all the way over on the side, and the other is equally spaced to the opposite side. What this now gives me is four layers of fabric across the front to resist wind and rain. I made the sleeves quite a bit longer. They are also adjustable by use of these leather frogs. There you are. And like the previous one, this coat is lined with muslin. Now that keeps the wax from the fabric from getting through to my regular clothes. I thought that it would be convenient to design this with closures you could use with your gloves on. And I came up with the idea of these leather frogs. They're a keyhole shape, as you may see here. You use them by slipping the larger hole over the button and then pulling it so that the long slot grabs the threads that secure the button. Like so. Okay. You can get to these with your gloves on. Now I wanted more water repellency, so I used a lot more wax. Problem was I ended up with a very stiff fabric. And if you move around enough, you'll eventually, well there you go, see? The fabric is stiff enough that it actually unhooks the frogs if it's on the cord. Oop. So I have to be careful how you wear it and not move around very much. Now, one thing I did also accomplish in this design I made a much taller collar, as you see. It comes right up underneath the helmet, so the helmet drains onto the collar and then that roll of water sheds off the side. And it can be closed or worn down. Alright, now the double breasting is very important. Let me show you how that works. So here I am with the second iteration of my own rain gear sitting on the Royal Enfield. As you can see, the sleeve is of course long enough now that it doesn't pull up over your wrist when you reach for the handlebars. And the double breasting we want to talk about. 
with more fabric from the center to one side of the front closure, I now have a generous flap that I can put in between my leg and the tank. This keeps the lower part of the fabric wrapped around the front of your shin and across the top of your leg. It also causes water to pool in the front of the jacket and pour down the face of the tank rather than finding its way into the hollow of the seat where you're sitting. So that worked out quite well. I had to put the leg straps in this design because they seemed cumbersome and just superfluous. Uh, I learned something about that. Turns out that the tail, the back section of the skirt of the coat, is not being controlled in the wind. So it sits here and flaps around quite a bit. If I relax my grip on the tank and let my legs open a little bit, that flapping can eventually work the jacket back off my knee. So the leg straps turned out to be quite important. Uh, what else did we notice? Oh, I, did, I eliminated the exterior pocket. Seems if I'm wearing uh, appropriate motorcycling apparel, and this is simply a raincoat, then I already have pockets in the clothing I'm wearing. So why do I need to put them on the raincoat? They also would uh, tend to fill with water if they weren't designed properly, or if the weather is particularly inclement. So I uh, got rid of those, made it easier to make. What I did include, though, is a pocket on the inside of the outer breast panel. Here it is. This allowed me to keep uh, you know, gas cash and ID and a credit card or whatever I need uh, conveniently accessible. Pretty easy to get to without having to pull the whole jacket off. Because it's still closed, the inner breast is still connected to the body of the jacket. Now the other thing I noticed with having the additional wax, it tends to get on the paint of the bike. Ah, no good. You're dry, coat works, Motorcycle is an absolute mess when it dries out and you see it the next day. Ah, and of course these frogs, although a clever idea, still they unlax themselves. But I'm getting closer. I think this is uh, showing some promise. Okay, so we purchased a Drover, attempted to modifications of the design in a lighter fabric with waxed cotton. And for every solution, there seems to be another problem. But I've come to the end of the road. Uh, I see everything I need to accomplish now. So what I will do in my final iteration, taking the last design with the taller collar and double breasting, I will reduce the collar a little bit. It's a bit too bulky, actually. I will replace those leather frogs with a marine grade snap hook. This is a simple hook that can be attached by a strap to the body of the garment, and it snaps onto a metal D-ring. And it has a spring safety in it to keep it from unlatching itself. But you can still use it with gloves on very nicely. Now that will also require that I cover or otherwise pad those snaps so you don't hear them hitting the bodywork of the bike. Shouldn't be hard to do. The leg straps have to come back into the design to tie that skirt of the coat around my legs. The length, double breasting, tucked between my knee and the tank, great idea, worked very well. In fact, I wore that last iteration to an event and left the house at 5.30 in the morning in a drizzle, rode for an hour, and arrived at my destination bone dry. What a great thought. Now, Something I hadn't shown you in that previous iteration, I thought to make my all-weather coat, and I had a wool liner between that muslin liner and the shell. That was made from an army blanket, actually, and it could be buttoned in or removed. I wore it that way one time, and it was just too bulky and heavy, and too hot, because I'd also worn heavy clothing underneath it. And it occurred to me, all I really need is a water repellent Windbreaker. So I'll keep the muslin liner so the jacket smooth, slides smoothly over my uh, regular clothes, and I'll eliminate the thermal liner. And one other thing I hadn't thought about until it struck me after having gone to all the bother of making both of the second and first and second iterations, I've basically made a candle. It's a cotton wick 
with uh, paraffin wax on it. If I'm ever in an accident and involves an open flame, I'm going to go up in flames too. Uh, not a great idea. The alternative is to coat the fabric on the inside with silicone caulking. It comes in a tube at the hardware store, can be applied with a Bondo spatula, cause it creates a very thin film on the inside of the fabric. The outside doesn't look like it's been treated, it gets dirty and can be washed, uh, but it resists soaking through of untreated fabric and lasts a good long while and it's easily replenished. So uh, I think that should be a very workable solution. It's more pliable than the heavily applied wax. And all around, I think we'll have a very good solution. So I look forward to having you stop by again to see the progress on that project. And as always, thank you for stopping by the Artistic Motorcycle Company. Goodbye.